And there are times that we need to stand up and be tough. But that's not what God calls us to do. In verse 44, in the group, obviously Joseph and Mary were traveling with a large caravan of friends and relatives from Nazareth. No doubt, hundreds of people from their community went together for the feast. So it was a big block party. I think that's happened a little bit before my time, but I think other people, anybody hand or head shake, can I get people know a block party? Okay, one, I got one, okay, I got two, all right, all right. I could be an auctioneer, got one, got two. <laughs> Men and women in such a group might have been separated by some distance. In fact, they said that the children and the women traveled in the front and men in the back. So, Mary would have been, well, I thought he was with you, Joseph. So, well, I thought he was with you. Well, I thought he was with you. You ever had get that? Go ask your mother. Well, she told me to ask you. Who am I supposed to ask? That's what I get. Three days, verse 46. Let's read 46. Now, this is going to be in the English Standard Version. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. This probably does not mean they searched Jerusalem for three days. They apparently realized he was missing at the end of a full day's travel. And that required another full day's journey to get back to Jerusalem. And the better part of another day was spent sinking him. And he was listening to them and asking them questions. He was utterly respectful, taking on the role of a student. But even at that young age, his question showed a wisdom that put the teachers to shame. This is how we can know that confidence that Jesus is God. Not only was he obedient to his parents, but yet he already knew. He already knew who he was. He knew what he was destined for. He knew he was God's only son. And let's just speak to Joseph for a second. In today's society, we know many, many people who come from a broken home, who come from a second marriage. It's not easy to be a stepdad. A lot of times dads had the control and the power in years and decades past, but now sometimes the pendulum swings the other way. And it's not easy to be a stepdad, to take on someone else who raises someone else's son, but takes them as their own. So let's give Joseph a little bit of praise. Let's give him a shout out, not only Mary. In fact, he had done precisely what any child, Jesus, should do when he was asked to go to a safe place, a public place in the presence of trusted adults. Now, he also knew that the teachers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were just two sects of, or sects, S-E-C-T-S, of theologians. There are many different theologians like we have today. Like you'll have your Catholic and your Protestant. Within your Protestant, we'll have your Reformed, and you'll have your Evangelical, or you'll have your Wesleyan or Arminian. We are of the Wesleyan Arminian that we have. We believe God has a free will that is a predestinist. We're not Catholic. So there's many different forms of theologians who take on different views on Scripture, and they like to argue on Scripture. They like to debate. So Jesus actually went to a trusted place. In my father's house, he said, contrasting in verse 49 with Mary's your father. His reply was in no sense to be obedient, but he reveals a genuine amazement that they did not know where to look for him. He said, well, where else do you think I'd be? So... Maybe it was a little bit smart alecky. I knew I would get, hey, why are you being smart? I go, look at me. You think I'm smart? You think I'm, you think I'm smart about anything? But no. He said, where else would I be? He had a clear conscience of his identity and his mission. But yet he was submissive. Verse 51. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. His relationship with his heavenly father did not override or nullify his duty to his earthly parents. We do that a lot today. That's kind of our mindset as Americans, as Midwesterns. I'm in charge of me. You can't tell me what to do. Okay? 
That's true, but everyone has to be submissive to another authority. Not only parents or children, sometimes the roles get reversed as we get older in life, but there's a, there's a bishop or there's a state director that's over me. Everyone needs to be submissive to one, someone else other than God. We all need to be kept in line. We all get off track here to one another. So Jesus models this for us, that we all should be submissive, submissive to the authorities that God has put over us. We do have a say, and we do have a reason to fight back if something is wrong and we petitioned and given things a chance. And me being a baseball guy, I always like to give somebody three chances, right? One strike, two strikes, three strikes, and you're out. Sometimes there's a foul tip in there or so, but we need to give people chances to explain themselves. Also, we give people time to come around, to let them listen to the Holy Spirit. A lot of times people have had a belief in their heart for a long time, and they were Maybe they had a bad experience as a child. I know with my own father, he has a very big deal about locking the vehicle. He always said, secure the vehicle. Well, I found out later on years ago, he grew up in New Waverly in Cass County, rural Cass County. But when they went to Peru, where I grew up sometimes, the, the vehicle was left unlocked and someone got in and stole some stuff. Now there's another question about why that upset him so much. But now we know the reason why he was so tough and hard on me, or hard on my brothers and I, all right? There's usually a reason behind the rule. So we need to give people grace and understanding, and Jesus models this. And he went down to them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. But listen to this last verse. As we get ready to close, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. So we don't have to fix everything today. I remember when Andrew Luck played with the Colts, he would say Chuck Pagano, the head coach at the time, there's no 14 or 21 year, uh, 21 point touchdown, right? You can only get one touchdown at a time. Do a little bit better than what you've done in the past. Read your Bible. Listen to it. Listen to a Christian radio program. On, if you've got a long drive in your morning to work, listen to a preacher. Find a podcast. Find something that speaks to your heart that is of God, that is of the Bible. Do just a little bit more. You don't have to do a whole lot more. Just do a little bit more. Just do one extra thing. Begin with yes. God will grow you. God is faithful and just to complete all his work in you. And he will do it. All you have to do is say yes and show the initial point. God will do amazing and beautiful things. I wanted to title this message, People Need God. And my point was that we need to keep being faithful. And thank you for those who come faithful out in the cold and the snow. We need to be people who need God because there's, and there's a song that, that we're going to close with today. People need the Lord. So as Karen comes forward.